perched high above the blacktop, it seems almost unreal, impossibly far, and yet just beyond reach. The desires that it instills are basic, power, freedom, and conquest. The dream that it inspires is of shedding all earthbound limitations. And it beckons to all who dare mount their assault. who aspire to rule the skies. Taking flight is only the beginning. It's all about having supreme confidence, and not many guys have it. You own the ball, you own the game, you own the guy who's guarding you, and you can actually Play him like a puppet. One bounce dribble out of Jordan. Michael hit from the left side, jammed it right. You don't last in this league long by being timid or intimidated by the people you compete against. Get tough, X. Get tough. Don't let him push you. McDaniel with a facial. Saying move over, buddy. You know, it's two of us here. We rock the baby to sleep and slam dunk. Just like Tyson, when he walk in the rain, he walk in the rain to take you out. These are people who can really just actually dunk on you, just don't care about you, your well-being. They would dunk in your face and just make you like it. NBA Entertainment presents the Super Slams of the NBA. The spectacle, the sensation, the exhilaration that knows no boundaries. the aspirations of leaving the earth behind, but only a select few can experience the unrestrained freedom of flight. People ask me, you really think you can fly? I say, yeah, for a little while. Come on, Jordan, fly. Here he goes! Get it up! <laughs> for his fans and his peers alike, Jordan is a natural wonder to behold as he defies reason and gravity. Once he get up there, then he say, well, may, maybe I just hang up here for a while, you know, up in the air and just sit back. And then all of a sudden, well, maybe I 360, no, I changed my mind, maybe I go up on there on the other side. And he's just incredible. When fellow hang glider Clyde Drexler takes to the air, he too conjures up images of flight and of grace that transcends sport. The start of it is wonderful. The acceleration, the, the drive to get to the basket, and the actual slam dunk is beautiful. That's why I consider Michael Jordan, Clyde Drexler, the most graceful basketball players that play the ball game today. Ballet and basketball, I think, are very close. I think basketball is a form of ballet. So you go right down the line from team to team, the guys that have the leaping ability, 
are usually the guys that will have the, uh, the most similarity to the dancers. And perhaps basketball's most elegant performer best captures its essence. My reaction and my internal reaction was more of calm and peace after the accomplishment. It's interesting how much that's turned around now, because you know, now you know we see guys dunk the ball, I mean, they get really excited and hype about it, start jumping up and down, raising fists. What really get me psyched up is a dunk. That, you know, to me, you know, that can get me psyched up, get me going. The thing that excites me the most is when a coach call a timeout and chew his forward out because I just dunked on his head. But the mailman is not alone in delivering punishing jams. Charles wants to. He can do whatever he wants to out there. There's very few guys can take over a game in the league. And he's probably one of them. Looks like he's just determined to take over this game. Here's Comedy. Here's Comedy. Oh. It's a good feeling. It's a strong, powerful feeling when you can dunk on a big guy and you know he's going at your shot hard. Dominic. I think in my neighborhood, it was a physical thing. I think only the strong survive. I try to uh, dunk it as hard as possible, so the next time I go to dunk it, the person who's checking me or anybody else, they'll think first before they'll try to block it. They are the explosive dunkers of the NBA and they generate contagious excitement. what he just did he just tore that thing the glass was just flying everywhere now i gotta see if i can do this again to doug collins to daryl dawkins oh he did it again he broke it again he's broken another backboard that's twice in one season and the crowd goes nuts oh my doug collins uh comes down with the ball i'm pretty sure it was doug collins bobby jones cut through he dished it off to me, and I went up, put it back on the numbers, and came through one more time, and it came down. Glass started falling, I started saying, yeah, yeah, I dig it, yeah. But the commissioner stopped there real quick. Claiming to hail from the planet Lovetron, Dawkins often seemed to be the NBA's version of extraterrestrial life. Are you with me, or? As an 18-year-old rookie, he would gain instant notoriety for his outrageous dunks and even more outrageous names for them. So I get up one night and I dunk a good one. The backboard's still shaking. I'm like halfway back down the floor. And I look back down and still swinging. And people are like, they said, what was that? I said, get out of the way and backboard swing, game delay, and if you ain't grooving, you best get moving. They said, what? So I said, hey, if you don't get a good response from this, I think uh, I'll name them all. I had a, a turbo saxophonic delight dunk where I went up and swiveled the hips a little bit and kind of brought it across. Here's Dawkins posting on Donaldson. Look out! <laughs> I had the rump roasting, bun toasting, cake shaking, baby making, thank you well, ma'am, I am jam dunk. Here's Dawkins. Oh, what a muscle move! And this time it's against Philadelphia. 
and I had to dunk call your mama. And that was for anybody who jumped in front of me while I was trying to dunk it. I'll just throw it right in on them and say, your mama. After 14 years as the NBA's clown prince of dunk, Dawkins would take his celebrated act across the ocean to Italy, where he received an enthusiastic reception from his new hometown fans. Quickly captivating his new audience, Dawkins didn't take long to realize the benefits of becoming an international entertainer. Though Darrell may be plying his trade overseas, the domestic dunk craze continues as even the most unlikely participants seem eager to get into the act. Though some may attempt more death-defying feats than others, the results are always entertaining. Locker Slam Fest, athletes from other sports got the chance to showcase their high wire acts. From Neon Deion Sanders, hold on, folks, buckle up. Oh! To triple jumper Mike Connolly, they all had their moment in the dunking spotlight. Summer Nights Classic made it clear that even during the offseason, the NBA's Air Force rules the skies. Today, the dunking rage leaves no one untouched. But in basketball's formative years, the NBA's greatest players, like George Mikan of the Minneapolis Lakers and Bob Pettit of the St. Louis Hawks, shun the stuff shot for fear of repercussions from their rough and tumble opponents. I mean, I could dunk, it was, but I would never even think of doing it. You never saw anybody take off from the foul line and try to dunk. If you did that, somebody would just put you right in the third row. In those rugged early years, an attempted dunk was a sign of disrespect, and it would be met with the swiftest of punishments. Well, every time you left your feet, you were endangering yourself because they'd take your legs right out. Players certainly could dunk the ball, but if you dunked the ball, your man didn't like it, and you would pay for it the next time. But despite this shot's perilous nature, the indomitable Minneapolis Lakers still dare to practice this rather unique way of putting the ball in the basket. We had guys that could dunk it just as well, but maybe not as high now. When we would warm up, we would have guys like Pollard and Mickelson and myself and a whole bunch all go up and dunk the ball. 
Slowly gaining acceptance, the dunk made its way from the practice court to prime time action. But this was only the beginning. For in the collegiate ranks, fans were flocking to arenas to catch a glimpse of a dunking prodigy by the name of Wilt Chamberlain. When I was in uh, junior high school, no one ever seen one dunk a basketball. You know what and I started just throwing balls down through the basket, and that was a whole new thing. Upon entering the league in 1959, this brazen rookie not only ushered the slam into prominence, but also utilized it as a devastating offensive weapon that could not help but command attention. The best dunk I ever saw was when Chamberlain would go up there and dunk that ball. Uh, that was sensational, because Chamberlain would slam it, really slam it down with tremendous force. Like Chamberlain, Baltimore's bruising forward, Gus Johnson, was another dynamic dunking force whose overwhelming physical skills astonished the opposition. Gus was probably the most spectacular dunker during, during my era because he could dunk from five or six feet away from the basket going by the basket. A power slammer with an imposing presence, Johnson attacked the basket with a reckless abandon and very few dared stand in his way. In contrast, high-flying Laker legend Elgin Baylor made his way to the basket less with force than finesse. While Baylor's contemporary, fluid performer Connie Hawkins also captured the imagination by bringing a stylish grace to the art form. To me, it was a form of expression and a lot of times you can be playing and come up with a dunk that could turn the momentum around in the game. That was important. Connie was the ultimate finesse. He was the first that I had ever seen with the huge hands that could glide and dunk and stuff all kind of different ways. Leaving his personal mark on dunking artistry, Hawkins astounded the basketball world with his distinct flair for the game. But though the art of dunking had begun to flourish, the NBA mainstream was still dominated by the traditional. With the perennial champion Boston Celtics setting a conservative tone, some of basketball's more daring innovators began to look elsewhere to find an outlet for their creative energies. The Offbeat American Basketball Association would provide an enticing alternative as these basketball mavericks thrived in this free-spirited new league. The ABA was a run-and-gun league. You had guys who, uh, who, who liked to run, who liked to get out, and uh, you know, we got a chance to just go to the, go to the hoop and invented different ways to, to throw the ball down. The pace was fast and furious as new look dunkers filled the airwaves. One of the challenges of the league of the ABA uh, was not to follow, you know, the precedent that had been established with the NBA, not just be a carbon copy of the NBA. Be, be something different. The ABA had found acceptance from its more established predecessor, due in large part to its larger-than-life symbol, Julius Irving. Quickly demonstrating his pioneering style, Dr. J made frequent and memorable house calls to the opposition's basket. I felt if I got near the basket that I could score on anybody. And the first way was to try and score over. If that lane opens up, you go in there and, you know, you ram the ball. Irving's supremacy would be tested in 1976 
when the acrobatic David Thompson vied for slam dunk preeminence in professional basketball's first dunk contest. Both men would leave the audience breathless, but in dramatic fashion, the good doctor would have the final word. It was really a, a showcase for the league. It probably still, from an emotional standpoint, was the best one that there's ever been. When the ADA was absorbed by the NBA, Dr. J faced yet another challenge. The, the pressures on a Julius Irving and the impact he had on the NBA. Who is this Dr. J who wins these dunk contests and does all of these things? Joining the Philadelphia 76ers, Irving wasted no time in making his impact felt as he boldly announced his arrival, making the NBA Finals in his first year and doing it his way. 95% of the things that I did on the basketball court, I had done before. I really considered those routine plays, although I know they were beyond the boundaries that one would call uh, fundamental. I mean, it was, it was not a risky shot for me to go and dunk the ball backwards. Immediately attracting a devoted following, Irving was embraced by even the worthiest of opponents. See, I didn't want him to make me look so bad, so when he dunked it, I'd catch him in the air, you know, for everybody can, like, say, ooh, he's a nice guy, not letting Doc drop. <laughs> Bringing the art of slam dunking to new heights, Irving was now the game's most recognizable figure. When you went on this road with Julius, it was like traveling with a rock star. If Dr. J got to the open court and dunked a basketball, it didn't matter what the score was. Everybody in the stands felt that they got their money's worth. They saw the doctor. After an eight-year hiatus, Gatorade would resurrect the slam dunk contest in Denver.